Should the Ravens trade for Falcons wide receiver Julio Jones? Now that the Ravens actually have two first round picks, can you see them trading up in the draft to select a top tier player? Do you think Lamar Jackson has a say-so in personnel and acquisitions that are made by the Ravens? These and many, many more great questions on this episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers. Make a rage quit, exit out the door. Exit out the door. Yeah. Yeah. Use his favorite team with a Baltimore. Huh? Don't get mad. Uh -huh. It's just what it is. You too, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Graven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers. And what that is is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team. And we answer it in a video just like this. Now, if you want to be part of NFL questions from subscribers, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. And your question will be in a video just like this. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. And, and I mean, speaking of the patrons, shout out to all of the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Thank you. Team Keep It Clean, we got some really good questions like we always do. But let's start it off with something that a lot of people been talking about today. Julio. So the first question on this episode of NFL Question from Subscribers came from... Yours truly. Should the Ravens trade for wide receiver Julio Jones? Now, this isn't the first time that we asked this question. But when we asked this question before, there were just rumors of Julio Jones possibly being traded. It was a thought. It wasn't anything concrete. It wasn't anything that had even been reported on. It was just rumors here and there circulating. But now, but now it's been put out there that the Falcons have been taking calls on Julio Jones. And I know some people might say, oh, well, they're just taking calls. That doesn't mean anything. Teams put this out there intentionally to get things moving, to get it moving. There were probably already people calling on Julio Jones before, but now the team's like, okay, we got to heat this thing up because we want to put this thing in the works. We want to get this thing moving. So now it's been put out there by several reporters that, hey, Falcons taking calls. Falcons taking calls. Julio got like this massive cap hit, I think, of like 15 mil, something like that. And the Falcons, they, they ain't trying to deal with it. So it's looking like Julio's time as an Atlanta Falcon is coming to an end. But should the Baltimore Ravens make that call? Well, the Ravens, I believe they have about 15 mil in cap space right now. But as we all know, if the Ra not even just the Ravens, if a team really wants somebody, because somebody asked me this on Twitter, they were like, whoa, well, wait, wait a minute. What about the Ravens cap situation? And I told them, I responded, the cap is cap. If a team really wants somebody, if they really want a player, they will find a way to get it done. And for me, if the Ravens had the opportunity to trade for a Julio Jones, now, real quick before we get into that, what would it take to get Julio Jones? Well, the trade, the Falcons are going to make this trade a post-June 1st trade. So that means it won't go into effect until then. But if you make any moves post-June 1st, then that any moves that create like dead money, anything like that, that allows you to break up the payment of whatever that move, uh, whatever that move requires you to pay on the cap or any dead money that, uh, that is allocated from the move. Like, for example, for Julio Jones... I don't know if these numbers are exact, but if, if the whatever the dead, uh, the dead money hit is, then if you did a post June 1st uh, cut, then you would be able to do half in this year, half on this year's salary cap and then half on next year's salary cap. But if you did, uh, if you traded him before June 1st, then it would all go on this salary cap. So whatever dead money, it would all go right here right now. So the Falcons are trying to sort of break it up. So that's why they're going to be doing it post June 1st. They can make the agreements now. It's like when we go into a new league year. Before the league year starts, teams have agreed to make whatever moves like the Rams and the, and the Lions. They agreed to trade uh, Stafford and, um, and Jared Goff. Uh, but it didn't actually go through until the new league year started. Same way with Julio Jones, how it's going to be for wherever he gets traded to. So what that means is that you don't have to give up any draft picks from this year. You would be giving up draft picks from next year. So I would love if the Ravens did it. I would love if the Ravens did it and they would be able to figure out a way to get him under the cap. They would be able to figure out a way to do it because it would take some restructuring, I'm sure. It will take some maneuvering of the cap. But again, you look at the Kansas City Chiefs. You look at what they do, and it seems like it's an annual thing that they do right now. But guess what? 
Hey, look where they're at right now. Look where they are. They're coming off of two straight Super Bowls. They won one of them, but they got to two of them. They should have actually gotten a three. But they, they've been doing their thing, and they keep building these crazy rosters. I know somebody, somebody's going to be like, well, in a couple years, they're going to be in some cap problems. Well, I would gladly take those cap problems if it meant that my team was going to be one of the top teams every single year for a long period of time. We'll deal with that when we get there. But if, say, for instance, you got the chance to compete for Super Bowls, for Super Bowls, you can build Super Bowl rosters every year. But you know that down the line, a few years down the line, that you're going to have some cap problems then. And maybe in that year, you may have to take a, a slight step back. OK, bring it on for me. Bring it on for me. I will take the immediate success right here, right now for cap problems, maybe for like a year, maybe two down the line. And even if you have those cap problems, it does not mean that you still won't be able to have a competitive team. You're just going to have to make some tough decisions. But anyway, with a Julio Jones, I would be with it because y'all know I've been saying I want the Ravens to go overkill for Lamar. Overkill. And I mean, if we had Sammy Watkins, again, we know his history. We know his history when it comes to missing games. Now, with Julio Jones, we know his history also when it comes to missing games, too. So, I mean, you put both of those together, that'd be a full seat. No, I'm, I'm just playing. But uh, it would be like you, that would really be you going in for the month. Now, Julio is older now, but Julio is still Julio. Julio is still Julio. Julio will be somebody that's been that guy on their team. Julio somebody that got plenty of experience. Julio somebody that can get it done. And he would give Lamar Jackson and the Ravens that true outside number one guy, that guy at wide receiver, and he would take attention away from everybody else. He would make everybody's job that much easier. He's a physical, he's, a, he's the perfect I remember we had a question from subscriber months ago on what the perfect prototype for the Ravens at wide receiver would be. What is it? And I said, Julio Jones. Perfect. Perfect. Because he got the frame, he got size, he got speed, he got strength. He does not mind blocking. He will go up and get it. He is that guy. He has been that guy for a long period of time. And then he will come here Julio Jones already got all the catches in the world. Now, things would change if he came to the Ravens, certainly. <laughs> his catching would probably, uh, all his receptions would probably drop in half. Uh, but he would be part of a successful team. He has some success with the Falcons, a little bit here and there, but not consistently. And with the Ravens, he would be a part of an, a team that's like right there. Right there. They stay close. They are so close. So I would be all for Julio Jones. Do I think the Ravens will do it though? Mm, not really. Next question came from my boy Melvin G. He said, what's up team, keep it clean. This is my first time sending a question, so here we go. Do you think the fact that Lamar Jackson doesn't know the terminology of the playbook is holding the offense back from opening the offense? Hear me out, nothing drives me more crazy than the offense lining up with seven or less seconds on the clock. But I noticed Lamar only calls plays off of his wristband. Now, see, that, that all depends. When the, uh, when the offense is lining up like that, is it because Lamar doesn't know the terminology or is it because G Row sending them out there super late? Well, what seems to be the disconnect right there? Uh, because that is something with the Ravens that happens too much, way too much. And it's, it's so frustrating because it can kill plays. It can mess up plays. It can kill drives. It can cause penalties. It can just set them back. Because, you know, Ravens do so much pre-snap motion and whatnot. They got guys running all over the field, left and right, back and forth. And when you, and they always say, set, with like two seconds left. Maybe less. And, and they do that like every game. So I don't know if that means that it's Lamar who doesn't know the plays. Or if it's Giro that's sending them out late. But whatever it is, it needs to get fixed like ASAP. Next question came from my boy Terrell B. He said, good morning, Graven. Hope all is well with you and the fam as always. I'm not big on fans calling for G-Row to get fired. Reason being, his system worked to Lamar's strengths to make him the MVP and help, our, uh, help have our coaches get recognition and even coach a Pro Bowl. I understand everyone is saying that receivers do not want to play for the Ravens because you will not get the amount of catches they desire, but the Ravens never have been a selfish team to worry about individual accolades, so I agree with Harbaugh in not begging a receiver to come to the team. 
The system we had with the 2000 Ravens didn't beg for a receiver and we won a Super Bowl. That's throwback, though. This is not 2000 football anymore. It is not a league where defense can win championships. You, you got to be able to put up points on the board. You have to. So that's, that's throwback. But anyway, he said, of course, the defense was a big cause for that. But with the addition of Sammy Watkins and with what we have already, uh, we should be good, good enough to give it a chance with the wide receiver coach additions. I'm excited that we may get another uh, Super Bowl. I know this was a hefty email, but I had to get it off my chest. Appreciate it, Terrell. Um, we'll see if they feel like Sammy is enough. I don't think that they should feel that way because, like we talked about, Sammy Watkins' injury history. But we'll see what the Ravens do. Draft is coming up. Julio's there. We got some other options, too, now. But um, we'll, we'll see how they really feel about their wide receiver group over the next week and change. Next question came from my boy, uh, Harry H. He said, hey, Engraven, how are you and the fam doing? Are we good? He said, hope all is well with everyone in the team. Keep it clean, family. Uh, my question is, now that we traded Orlando Brown Jr., do we focus on a center, left guard, or right tackle in the draft, or all three? I think they will end up signing Dennis Kelly as a right tackle and will have Tyree Phillips as a swing tackle. Therefore, they can draft a development tackle late in the draft. Which leads me to believe that either we get a starting left guard and move Bozeman to center, or we have Bozeman at left guard and draft a starting center. What are your thoughts? I, I would say the center. Uh, I, I would say center first and foremost. And like my guy Sonny from SCG Sports said, he made a very, very good point that the Ravens have passed over uh, Bradley Bozeman at center quite a few times uh, to go with other options. Even when they, had, they shuffled the offensive line, they had injuries along the offensive line. They weren't like, okay, Bozeman, you play center in college, go ahead and move out. Nope, they left him right where he was at. So I don't think that they're going to all of a sudden move, move him to center now. Um, I, so I, I would say they would draft the center. So I think that would be the first uh, focus. Now right tackle, maybe they do run with Tyree Phillips uh, after he has an offseason. Because remember last year he was a rookie and last year he didn't have an offseason. So maybe he is the plan that they have in place. Because remember too, with Orlando Brown Jr., we knew, even before he got traded, we knew when it came to Lamar, Mark Andrews, uh, Orlando Brown Jr., those were the top three. And we knew the Ravens were only going to sign two of them. We knew Lamar wasn't going nowhere. And then we also knew Mark Andrews, he ain't going nowhere either. So Orlando Brown Jr. was always the odd man out. So Tyree Phillips could already be what, he, he could be what the plan was. Now with Orlando Brown Jr. being like, hey, I want to play left tackle. Okay, the Ravens granted him that wish, and they may have to just accelerate the process for replacing him, uh, which could be Tyree Phillips. Next question came from my boy Philip L. He said, now that Orlando Brown Jr. has been traded, so many fans want to see a first-round wide receiver like Bateman or Marshall taken. But me, I'm not one of those fans. There's a lot of holes that need to be filled on the roster and uh, do the trade that we now have nine total picks. Once the draft is here, I would not be surprised if EDC was to draft a pass rusher at 27 like Jalen Phillips from Miami uh, if he was to fall due to his medical condition history. Then with the 31st pick, pick a caliber ready-to-go starting uh, offense of tackle uh, like Tevin Jenkins from Oklahoma State. Now, I know after the draft, Villanueva will be signed, but I believe he will mainly be used as a security blanket just in case Stanley ain't ready at the beginning of the season because he's 33 years old, never played right tackle, and was never good at run blocking. Now, we know how EDC always goes by best player available, so if they think they could trade back and pick up that player, I wouldn't be surprised if they traded 31 and moved back to the top of the second round and drafted a wide receiver like Diami Brown uh, or Mari uh, Rogers. Uh, plus received an additional third round pick in that trade. So what are your thoughts? Mm, you, you made some really good points, especially about uh, Villanueva. Uh, Villanueva, I do not think um, if the Ravens sign him, yeah, I don't think he is that guy for them at uh, either tackle spot. But yeah, like you said, I do completely agree. He is, uh, it, whether it's him, Dennis Kelly, or whether it's somebody else who, who they're not talking about publicly. Um, I, but as far as Villanueva specifically, Feel like it's just an insurance policy. It's just insurance. And um, now Dennis Kelly, he was somebody that was a starter. He was a quality starter too for the Titans. He was a quality starter for them. Um, so he could end up being the guy. And again, yeah, he could be. They could put him in a starting lineup, or they could be like, you know what? It's just insurance, just in case Ronnie ain't good to go yet. Um, but yeah, if they if they went to the draft uh, to get a tackle, that could be another route. But again, like we said before, maybe Tyree Phillips with a full off season. He can be that guy. He can be ready to go. But they are certainly going to add to their uh, offensive line via the draft, especially the interior of it. 
Next question came from my boy Mike B. He said, do you think the Ravens will most likely trade up in this draft to snag a top tier player? Unlike past years. You mean unlike forever? Uh, well, normally. You know, they did go back up to get Lamar. Anyway, uh, I don't see them trading back into the second round because they've already given up a second rounder for Orlando Brown Jr. Hmm. I just can't, man. I, I, I just, I, I can't see them doing that, man, because it's just, it's so unraven. Like, it's so unraven, like, to, tr to really trade up. They got some ammo now, man. They got ammo, but I just... Like, trading up in the first round. Like, they've traded up in other rounds before, too. And, now, I mean, they traded up in the first round, too, before, like, a little bit. But to really, like, trade up, up to get a top, I, I, I just can't see them doing it. Next question came from my boy Rodell. He said, what's up, my guy? I hope you have an amazing day and all the team keep it clean, too. First things first, isn't it ironic that the Ravens love going after old wide receivers but don't want to go get the 32-year-old that has the best on-field resume and maybe the best wide receiver to ever sport the black and purple? Yeah, Mr. Fly Like a Butterfly, Sting Like a B. Oh, I didn't know where that was going, but... <laughs> what? One of his cases just got settled, and in only half a season with Tom, AB's numbers would rank second if he was on the Ravens, where most of our wide receivers played 16 games. Just crazy to me, this isn't a done deal, or is it? May 4th. And May 4th would be, uh, well, after May 3rd. I don't know if it's May 3rd or May 4th officially, but anyway, that's when uh, signing an outside free agent would not count against the compensatory pick formula. But let's keep going. He said, uh, secondly, does Lamar Jackson have the status to have a say-so in player personnel and acquisitions? Uh, I'm not so sure he is there yet, but I'm also sure, not so sure that he isn't. Like you have to believe he vouched for AB or some other free agents. Or maybe in the draft he has his preference of guys he would like to put his trust in. After all, he is doing for this franchise. Uh, or after all he is doing for this franchise, we have to give back to this phenom. What do you think? Oh, uh, well, he wanted Hollywood, and he got him. He got him. Uh, so that was a good choice. Yeah, he tried to get Juju, but Juju said, mm, no, no, I'm straight, straight. Um, and so, yeah, he has somewhat of a say-so, um, but you got to feel like it's, it, it's, I feel like it's not too much. I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but I, I feel like um, the Ravens, they probably have their vision uh, on the way that they want to really build this team. Um, they have in their minds how they really feel what type of players would best fit this Ravens roster. Um, so I think they would take some input here and there from Lamar, but I think anything that they do would be uh, mostly just on their, their own thoughts. <laughs> Next question came from my boy Q. He said, Engraven, what's up, brother? Can I ask you why you think Miles Boykin is the guy? I do not think his potential is even close to A.J. Brown or D.K. Metcalf. He's a good piece for the team, but he does not have a dog personality to be a true number one. Compare him to his draft class, even Hollywood. His football personality is not demanding, which is why his play reflects it, and Lamar doesn't trust him. What are your thoughts? Hmm. That's a really good question. And with Miles Boykin, um, it's not that I think he is the guy. I would love for him to be the guy. Um, I don't think it's there right now, but I do not think that he, his potential has been absolutely exhausted with the Ravens to where, oh, all right, we tried everything that we possibly could with Miles Boykin, but hey, it just didn't work out. If that was the case, if the Ravens were, had been doing that for the past couple of years, then I would be like, okay, no, he, he ain't got it. But they haven't been. They haven't been. Now, we know, like, and, and one, one thing, too, to think about, he doesn't have a dog personality. I know I, I hear a lot of people say that. Uh, and I can I can understand why they say that. But think about this. If he didn't have that dog personality, what kind of personality does he have? Does he have a diva personality? Because you sure don't see him complaining about blocking. And what's my even though he is a wide receiver, what's Miles Boykin known for the most with these Baltimore Ravens? He's known for being a very, very good blocker. Now, there are a lot of receivers that receivers love to catch. They love catching passes. And when they don't catch passes, some of them will complain. They'll vent, they'll let it out. And I, I ain't really got a problem with that because that's a receiver's job to catch passes. But you would think that if, if this guy really didn't have that dog mentality, do you think he would be a good blocker? Could he be a nice guy and be like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm getting ready to block you now. A cornerback or a linebacker or a safety, I'm getting ready to go ahead and block you now. Please, clear out the way because I need my running back, so I need my quarterback, or I need my wide receiver to get some yak, so I'm going to, would you please excuse us? No, 
He has to have some nasty in him to, in order to be a good blocker. He has to. You can't be no, hmm, hi, how's it going? Oh, yeah, how's the family doing? You can't be that and be a good blocker. No. You got to have that dog in you. So with Miles Boykin, he's got something there. But it's up to the Ravens to really bring it out that much more. Now, of course, him and Lamar got to get on the same page. They are clearly not there from what we've seen. And again, hopefully this season, just like we hoped last season, but hopefully this season, those opportunities will be there. And Lamar got to put more trust in him, too. Lamar, yeah, like you said, Lamar don't trust him. He doesn't. We see that because there's plenty of opportunities where Miles Boykin has been open and Lamar be like, oh, no, I'm, I'm straight. And even if it's a one on one, Lamar will look and be like, oh, no, no, I'm straight. Sometimes he won't even look his way. But they just the Ravens have not pushed Miles Boykin to his full potential. So this is why I haven't given up on Miles Boykin. Like I know a lot of Ravens fans have I, because I, I, I you just know if he was somewhere else. And it's like it's crazy because we say this about so many Ravens receivers. If they were somewhere else, they would eat, eat. We know Ravens, their philosophy and they're just MO is not receiver friendly. It's not. So with Miles Boykin, I'm not. Until I actually see them really invest in Miles Boykin and, or, or he see him go somewhere else and it do doesn't work for him somewhere else, then I would give up on him then at that point. But right now, no, not even close. And the last question on this episode of NFL Question from subscribers came from my boy, Carlo Iron Attic. He said, I've been thinking. Shout out to my guy too, man. He said, now that some time has passed after this trade, I will say this move says a lot of things. But one of those things could be that Stanley is looking good and better than expected. If that's the case, I love this move by the Ravens. If not, I know there's a plan. Uh, if it's a long-term deal between Orlando or Andrews, it's been real, Orlando Brown Jr. We pick Andrews all day. Yep, see, we were just talking about that earlier. Uh, we all wish him the best in following his dreams, but I think we have more pressing matters at hand. We are hunting a championship. The Chiefs had their fun. It's our time now. Uh, but, I mean, <laughs> well, the Chiefs, they looking like they're trying to have some more fun by all the moves that they have been making. Got Orlando Brown Jr., got uh, Joe Thune bringing back um, David uh, Tardif, I forgot his name. Anyway, uh, so I believe this was the best option for us both, and I can see us moving Villanueva to right tackle. And again, hopefully he wouldn't be the end-all, be-all there, but we'll see. Uh, which he has more than enough experience in the league to handle the switch since he did it with the Pittsburgh Steelers. The more I think about this trade, I'm excited and glad for this aggressive move by Eric DaCosta and this promising strategy for us as Ravens fans. Earlier this week, we only had seven draft picks with only two in the fifth round. Now to having nine in total with two picks in every round, but the second. With a starter in the pipeline to replace Orlando Brown Jr. at right tackle. With those same picks, we can say we are now in a better position to really improve on offense and truly build around Lamar Jackson. And with his upcoming contract in mind, uh, since it seems we can never afford anyone on offense. Mm. Uh, there are some very talented offensive linemen, outside linebackers, linebackers, safeties, and most requested wide receivers. And the way DaCosta has been moving, he definitely has some great foresight of the players who we need. What do you think? He said a plan is a series of small steps. Without those steps, there is no plan. Shout out to Carlo. All right, so. Whew, this is a nice way to end it off. Um, yeah, it did this. Uh, the Orlando Brown Jr. trade, it did give them more picks. It certainly did that. I, I agree with that. But I also think that it slightly, it slightly set them back a bit, too. Because, I mean, of course, yeah, like you said, they, they got their plan in place. And again, I think that plan could be Tyree Phillips. But we'll see. But it does set them back a bit because now you also created a hole. Now, yeah, you do have more opportunities to fill that hole now since you have a few more picks uh, and a higher pick, too, for now. Even though I don't expect the, I don't I don't think anybody does, but I don't expect the Ravens to pick two times in the first round. I, I, I don't expect that at all. I think that the Ravens are going to end up trading back one of those picks. I think everybody feels that way, too. But I feel like the Ravens are going to end up trading back with one of those first round picks to get even more picks because, you know, they love all them picks. I would I would love for them to either trade up or stay where they're at. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, they did give the they, they gave themselves more of an opportunity. 
Like it's, like Eric DaCosta said, hey, the more times we swing, more opportunities we have to hit on these draft picks. And that is true. Um, but you also got to look at the situational swinging. At least I do. Now, with the situational swinging, yeah, more draft picks, more chances to get more guys. But if those draft picks are low, then that lowers the chances of those guys being impact players. And that's what I've said, that the Ravens really need to get this draft more impact players. Because under Eric DaCosta so far, under the past two drafts, and I know last year is kind of like shaky because of the offseason and what it was. But they just need to find a way to get more impact players. And no, impact players are not just in the first round. But if you're picking them in the first round, then, hey, those guys are usually you're, you're almost forced to use those guys that much more because they were higher draft picks. So they were higher investments for your team. So with that being said, I'm just I, I hope I hope that with this draft, biggest thing is getting guys that are going to make a difference right here and right now. Not project guys, not, oh, well, we'll see how that guy does. Hopefully he's a good special team. I mean, you need special teamers now. I'm not discrediting the special teamers now, but still, you need to find impact guys on this, in this draft. And then, like you said, they need to be able to build around Lamar. And the, the first building around him starts with the offensive line. That's why I feel like they took a, a step back with getting rid of Orlando Brown Jr., so we'll see how they replace him. I don't think Alejandro Villanueva will be an upgrade. Or Dennis Kelly, uh, he would he be an upgrade? No, I don't think he'd be an upgrade. But Dennis Kelly would probably be a more solid option than Villain Waiver. So we'll see what the Ravens do. That that's a lot of what we have to do right now. We just gotta wait, sit back, and see what the Ravens do moving forward.